And welcome back, everybody, to Tales of Berseria. This is Berserker Tempest, bringing you yet another chapter in this wonderful, tragic story. I'm trying to think last time what happened. We found... I don't remember her name. Um... We also found the brother and sister priest, preacher, whatever, whatever it is. And, and, we're on the beach. We're in South Gand, even more. But, what's in store for us this time? We'll find out, and my memory will come back to me eventually. Take a look. Scout ship. All right. I'll be right back. All right, and now we're gonna see what happens next. From what we heard in Isalt, demons are attacking villages, and more people are growing upset with the Abbey. So I hadn't expected things in Haria Village to be so laid back. They might be on their best behavior because you're accompanied by an exorcist. Huh. I didn't know you could see the world in more than just black and white. The Abbey wouldn't entrust my responsibilities to someone who couldn't see beyond the surface. I have seen many things in my work. I've beheld both the light and the darkness in the world of men. Hmm. Despite that, no, because of that, I won't turn away from the wrongs that I encounter. Moreover, I have faith. I believe there is good in all our souls. The darkness, huh? Yes, like you. You're awfully direct. Damn. Straight disrespect. Alright, and now we're just gonna collect some souls, do some things. Mainly collect souls, and then do things. I've also got to... I just saw that. All right. Oh, nice. Fred Sage. Yeah. Okay. Where? Ah, oh, behind the tree. all these fruit flavored gels right um so i made gels using the giant cacao beans only found here on this island it gave them a nice bitter chocolate taste but people complain that they weren't avant-garde enough Ugh, chocolate flavored gels how prosaic bah this got me fuming so i caught some maiden bonita fish you find around here ground them up and made some gels with them you put fish into chocolate gels? Well, people do braise meat with chocolate. Chocolate and fish may go surprisingly well together. Exactly! It was the discovery of a century! The Bonito Flakes crunchiness and the gels gumminess made for an exquisitely bad combo, which made it interesting. So if you made an innovative new type of gel, why are you so angry? That's exactly my problem! I outdid myself! Now I need to make my gels world debut as amazing as they are. 
So I thought up the ultimate plan. And that is? I'll put my Chocanito gels in toilets all over the world. I'll call it uh -huh. the Great Chocanito Toilet Gambit. No one will go to the bathroom without finding my gels. I think everyone will have a lot of fun. Uh -huh. So, genius, right? <laughs> yeah, it's weird, but I think it's funny too. Right? Uh -huh. I knew that kids would get it. Who's a kid? But all the adults in my village called it silly and lowbrow. They forbade me from selling my Choco Nito gels at all. Isn't that just horrible? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Aw, oh, man. Things used to be so much better. Mom would make me dinner, and all I had to do was go, 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 go. And everyone would smile and praise me. I don't want to become the kind of grown-up who can't find any fun in looking for gels in toilets. Okay. So just throwing that out of there, right? The kid is absolutely making... Fake shit. And putting it in bathrooms all over the country or town excuse me we could use a place to stay any rooms open yep just finished cleaning in fact you can help yourself to that room there all right time to start deciphering this scroll Let's wait somewhere outside so Grim can concentrate. Um, do you think maybe I could stay and watch? I really do want to study the ancient tongue. I promise I'll be quiet and not get in your way, teacher. What did you just say, child? Uh, that I'd be quiet and... No, what did you call me? Teacher? You said you didn't want to be called ma'am, so I thought maybe that'd work. Yes, satisfactory. All right. I'll teach you how to read ancient Avarost. Thank you so much, teacher! We'll leave you two alone then. Let us know if anything comes up. Is it me? And please, put this in the comments below. But Grim sounds like a dummy mommy. I'm gonna let you uh, digest that for a second. Um, but yeah, let's continue. So she digs being called teacher. Well played, Laffy said. She wasn't so fond of ma'am. So I guess he figured he needed an alternative. You can tell how badly he wanted to help her with the language he work. I think our Moloch boy's finally finding himself. So it would seem. What connection do you think there is between the violent demon Teresa mentioned and this village? Couldn't tell you. Could there have been a demon blight breakout here? This village doesn't look like it's been attacked, but... Whatever it is. If it keeps the Abbey's eyes off us for once, that's good enough for me. You really will use anything and everything towards your own aims, won't you? Yep, and that includes you. As I'm sure you've noticed. Listen, I don't know what they told you in Isolt, but our village has its own traditions. This village is under the divine protection of the Empyrean Amenoch. For unbroken centuries, a line of his priestesses have guided us. They're tasked with performing the sacred rites of worship. And sometimes, they even deliver us his words and will. And there's still a priestess today? Of course! And her daughter is training to become our next priestess. Although, I sometimes feel they push themselves too hard. Both mother and daughter are giving their all for Haria. But the Abbey doesn't care about any of that. 
And they stole our temple from us. By force? An exorcist named Teresa came and heard us out. But from the very beginning, she always intended on taking our temple. Her words may have been kind, but that doesn't change the fact that she demanded that we worship her god, Enomenat. In all the years we've worshipped Amenoch, not once did we ever try to force others to adopt our beliefs. Why haven't I seen this priest as she's talking about? Interesting. How strange, indeed. Found you. Damn it. Damn it. Do you plan on just giving up? Polymedes is Amenoch's temple. The priestess isn't the only one whose job it is to protect that temple. It's the duty of everyone born in this village. Why did the Abbey need Amenoch's temple badly enough to risk causing this much unrest? But how will we protect our village from the demons if the Abbey abandons us? Besides, we won't be able to do business with the people of Isolt anymore. Our faith in Amenoch has nothing to do with the demons. When the priestess gets back, I'm going with her to protest. The demon blight changed everything. Will we never be able to return to the way things were? The way things were. Hmm. Banning local religions. The Abbey sure knows how to oppress the populace. I'd imagine that comes part and parcel with spreading the good word. Other gods would only get in the way. From what we overheard, it sounds like they've taken over Amenoch's temple, Palamedes, to use as their base of operations. Sealing it off would be provocative enough, but straight up taking it over? Not a lot of so-called reason to that. Unless... Do you think they need it for some other purpose? Shrug. It sounds like deciphering the text might take some time. We should be prepared to wait it out here a while. Hopefully it'll all be worth it in the end. I hope so too. But ancient Avarost is complex. It's not just a matter of knowing the grammar and vocabulary. Oh? Then how exactly do you read it? I'm not sure about the specifics myself. But from what I understand, you kind of have to intuit a lot of it. A language based on guesswork? Thanks, old dead people. You're officially the worst. Ancient Avarost, you have the obstinacy of a spurned lover who refuses to move on. Even for you, teacher? It's this one crucial line. I can't wrap my head around it. Uh, well, from what you've taught me so far, it looks like it says... Sa, Popo, Mucho, Sanchon. Correct, but if you merely translate it word for word, it ends up saying, The parent hates tomatoes, the child eggplants. I doubt those have much to do with Enominat. <laughs> yeah. Their grammar is nothing like ours. Sometimes you have to reorder the words, and even then the meaning can require leaps of logic and flashes of intuition. Reordering? So, like, San San, Pocho Pocho, Pocho Musan, Pocho Musan. Can you read it that way? Pocho Musan. Now, where did you get that from? These words are lined up, like they repeat. And when I read this part that same way, it just felt right. Pocho Musan. Hmm, if that's repeated here, then the passage turns into the nameless Empyrean. Empyrean! 
Ho oh, ho, that has to refer to Innominat. I think we're on to something. All right, so if we apply this rule here, then... Hmm, hmm. It would seem to be a book of children's counting songs. It's not about Innominat? What matters is what the song says, child. And I think you will be very interested in the words. I wonder if they've made any progress yet. Shall we go check on them? The fact the child figured it out on a whim. But a lot has been done for less. Well, any results? Yes. Well, thanks to the boy here. As it turns out, he has quite the knack for languages. <laughs> Only because I've got the best teacher. Careful, honey tongue. You'll give this old girl ideas. Huh? Now, child, I'm sure they're curious about the song we unearthed. Why don't you read it aloud? Yes, teacher. Song? Eight-headed is the lord of the land, with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Through pulses of earth doth base nature's flow, as he awaits the time of awakening. Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. You've got The it. nameless Empyrean hath one heart. The nameless Empyrean hath one body. Therians? Essentially, this ancient text you found is an annotated volume of drawings and songs pertaining to Enominot. Annotated? Then hurry up and just tell us what it means. I'm sorry. So far, we've only figured out how to read the song lyrics. All right. I take it we're still in for a good long wait before it's thoroughly decrypted. Likely so. But if we want to find out what the Abbey is up to, we need to know what's in this book, no matter how long it takes. Hmm. What the Abbey's up to, is it? I think we can learn much, even from the lyrics alone. The drawings depict him with eight heads. One of them belongs to his main body, but the other seven are his mouths. Those mouths consume malevolence, sending it along earth pulses back to that main body so he can awaken. The seven monsters fitting that description are called... Therians. Right. Now as for this malevolence, I have no idea what that means. Hmm... What about the second part? I haven't studied much ancient history, but it said this world was created by four Empyreans. Earth, water, wind, and fire. But they also call Enominat an Empyrean. Perhaps a war broke out between Enominat and the other Empyreans that resulted in him being sealed away. But if there is someone to connect with this divine power, the Therians will keep spawning. And just like that, Enominat will be revived. If we assume that Shepard Artorius fits that bill, and that he's trying to reawaken Enominat, everything lines up. Which means our job is to find these Therians and cut off Enominat's heads, so to speak. But where do we even start looking for them? Remember. 
The song states that the Therians and Enominat's body are connected through Earth pulses. If their job is to feed Enominat, the most effective place to position them would be at the Earth pulse points. Points? The places where the power of Earth pulses is concentrated. Temples. Places with that sigil. Hey, remember the barrier that was keeping this bug in the forest? Wait, are you trying to say that thing's Aetherian? And yet, it would explain why the Abbey was keeping it locked up. And there was that same barrier at the villa, too. That's right. Do you suppose that was also a Therian? Does that mean the Therians all come in different forms? Should we go to Logres and check? We've just started deciphering the book. I'd hate to lose time on some fool's errand. I'd rather know at least a little more about what's in it before we make a move. Hmm. Something bothering you, Grim? This line, the one about Therians being forever reborn. Uh, I just felt the same thing as I did in Warg Forest. The needle's pointing in the direction of Amenoch's temple, Palamedes. Do I recall hearing that the Abbey took that over? Temples and ritual sites are often built on places thought to be rich in spiritual energy. Could the temple possibly be an Earth Pulse Point? There's lots of Earth Pulse Points scattered all over the world. If there's only seven Therians, most of them will be empty. It's not like we have any better leads. If there's even a chance, shouldn't we go check it out? Better than sitting around waiting on the book. If nothing else, we'll find out what Laffy said is sensing. Hmm. Just a theory, but if you were to kill a Therian. What? Hmm. I guess there's only one way to find out. Never mind. Good luck out there. What a twist! This is just getting exciting now. Keeper's daughter. I just... I happened to overhear you all talking about going to Palamedes and... Did you report us to the Abbey? Report? But you already have an exorcist with you. If you have any business, talk with her then. I... I'm Eleanor Hume, an exorcist with the Abbey. How might I be of service? I want you to look for someone. A mother and her child went to visit the Abbey grounds, but they haven't returned. They've both gone missing? Yes. The mother's name is Mahina. She's a priestess of Amenoch, and her little daughter's name is Kamoana. Hold on, if she's a priestess of Amenoch... Right. Ever since the Abbey booted her out from the temple, she's been regularly going back to make her objections heard. But one day, she never returned home. And now her daughter has disappeared too. I can only assume that she went to go look for her mother. And you believe they're being held at the temple? 
Oh no, ma'am. I just... I just can't imagine Mahina would abandon her daughter like that. Kamalana is next in line to succeed her, so she's had a strict upbringing, but her mother truly loves her. Please forgive Mahina for her protests. I was just hoping you could use the Abbey's resources to track them down. I will do everything in my power to find them. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Like Kamoana, I grew up with only my mother as family. I can't help but worry for them. Of course. Let's be off, Miss Exorcist. Okay, so we have a family. Oh, I knew this would be big. What a treasure! Nice. Unyielding. Asrasi. Scholarly drive. Scout ship settings. All right. So, Eleanor, what's your game here? The mother and daughter, you mean? That's on me. I'll search for them myself. I don't care about that. Well, what then? Why are you actively helping us decipher the book when we're using it to thwart the Abbey's plans? You think I might be deliberately misleading you? Laying a trap of some sort for you all? Are you? I think you're a lot of things, demon. But foolish is not one of them. <sighs> I want to know the truth. I want to know what Lord Artorias is trying to accomplish. And there's something happening in the world right now. I want to know what it is. Unfortunately, little old Eleanor has never been deemed trustworthy enough to be given such information. So, my only option is to find out for myself. You've got the soul searching down at least. The Abbey and your band of rogues follow two different paths. But something tells me either will lead me to the same destination. And so you don't see any need to lie to us? Exactly. And what'll you do if those truths don't line up cleanly with what you believe? I'm... not sure yet. As honest an answer as any. Either way, it looks like you'll be working with us for the near future. Yes, for now. Hey, could I ask you something? What is it? About the Therians. I've heard you call yourself a Therian before. Is there any particular insight you have about them? No, none. Artorius said I was one, that's all. And that doesn't bother you? Does it bother you? Nope, not at all. If you're not worried, then neither am I. I'm surrounded by freaks. But, was that truly the reason Ceres chose me? Velvet keeps picking on Madame Eleanor! They're total opposites, so I know they're just gonna clash sometimes, but Velvet takes it too far! You really think they're totally opposite? If Madame Eleanor is a white lily, then Velvet is a black rose. If Madame Eleanor is a soaring pegasus, then Velvet is a wolf in the shadows. If Madame Eleanor is a plate of spaghetti carbonara, Velvet is squid ink noodles with seaweed. I don't follow you completely, but I think I get the point. <laughs> I'm sure you understand. The two have nothing at all in common. And since they don't share anything in common, some fighting now and then just can't be helped. Well, they both have beautiful hair. Okay, but we're talking a noble exorcist and an aloof demon. Eleanor sometimes treats you coldly. And Velvet has helped me more times than I can count. Madame Eleanor gives herself fully to the salvation of others, but Velvet is bent solely on revenge. That means they're both motivated by thoughts of others. How is the cheerful and talkative Madame Eleanor at all the same as the brooding, taciturn Velvet? Both of them talk to me when it's just the two of us together. You're just trying to be contrary. I'm only telling you what I've experienced. Yeah. <laughs> 
Actually, I feel that Madame Eleanor isn't really reaching out to me. It's all right if Eleanor doesn't want to talk to you. I'm here for you, Bienfu. You aren't alone. That just makes me feel lonelier. <laughs> you two are opposites yourselves. Huh? Fair. Absolutely fair. All right, how am I going to get through this? Bye. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is either. Stop screaming at me. I didn't do nothing. Leave me alone. No. Okay. Let's find out what's behind this door. Oh, you dirty rats. Oh, hello. Hello, Squillium. I want to wear your flesh. Give it to me. Let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, I will be right back. We're back. That was aggravating. That's where I started to get tired. All right, let's not take a nap. Let's definitely keep going. Oh no, there's a bird chasing me. I don't know what kind of abomination you bastards are. This shore just keeps going. Just don't step on any sea slugs, okay? Why not? What's the big deal? It's just that. It isn't pretty. Their insides squish everywhere. Yikes. That sounds pretty traumatizing. Then again, if you pickle their innards, it makes for a great snack. You eat them? Oh, don't be a baby. You've had worse. Forget the sea slugs. Try not to step on the coral. Good point. Coral is alive and needs our protection. Or maybe it's because some of it can be sold for jewelry. I didn't mean either of those reasons. Although Manon appears similar to Maclear Beach, it was formed by a completely different process. Now that you mention it, this area is covered by rocks. Maclear is just your average seashore. But Manon here was made by the slow corrosion of seaside caves. They were worn away by the waves? That too. But mainly, it was the handiwork of a rock-eating species of coral, known as ravening table coral. Stay in contact long enough, and they'll melt your flesh right off. Ah, so that's why it tingles every time I touch the coral. 
Why didn't you warn us earlier? Would be nice to have some form of like effect now once that's learned. But alas, jeez, fuck. Ah, no. Wrong, wrong. Lappy said, have you been taking care of that rhino stagros like a good boy? Of course. I make sure to feed it every night before I go to sleep, since it's nocturnal. How long are you going to keep on calling it a rhino stag roof? I don't know. It's a new kind of beetle, so it's going to be hard to tell if it's really a rhino or a stag. You're asking a lot of questions. Bienfu, do you like bugs? Duh! I love rhinoceros and stag beetles both! What guy doesn't find them fascinating? Right? So which kind of beetle do you think it is? Rhino or stag? Oh, that's a tough question. But guess what? Miss Mugilu taught me a surefire way to tell. I didn't know there was a way to tell. Yeah, but if I do it, you gotta name it after me, all right? Uh... Come on! What guy doesn't wish he had a cool bug named after himself, right? And besides, Miss Mugilu told me that this technique is so good that it's only fair to have a bug named after you in return. So what do you say, man to man? Come on, let's live the dream! Oh, all right. How can I say no to that? Besides, we all did work together to capture it anyway. Yay! Thanks, Laffy Set. All right, show me the bug and I'll tell you what it is. Miss Mogilu says you need to open up its outer wings and get a good whiff of the thin underwings. Uh, I'm pretty sure I remember rhinoceros and stag beetles smelling really nasty under their wings. Is it really that bad? Why not find out for yourself? Uh, no thanks. I think I'll pass. Maybe you shouldn't do this after all, Bienfu. You probably just want to hog the name all to yourself! Well, too bad! A real man never goes back on his word! If it packs a mean punch, then it's a rhinoceros beetle. And if it smells really zesty, then it's a stag beetle. I don't know about this. Just let him do it, Laffy said. He's already volunteered. I can do this? Just you watch! <laughs> this smell is the most bad, bad thing that ever bad, bad in it! Whoa! He fainted with his eyes still open! Hey! Wake up! Wake up, Bianfu! Miss Mogilu, as soon as I smelled it, my nose literally exploded. Oh boy. He looks like he's having a bad dream. <laughs> I spy with my little eyes a kiddo who's spying at my bewitching waist. Oh, sorry. I just couldn't help it. What are those books, anyway? Oh, that's a great question. Since you asked, I'll reveal the secrets of my tomes just for you. On the right, I've got my household ledger in the back, and my magic encyclopedia in the front. That one I mostly use for oil blotting paper. What's oil blotting paper? It's a girl thing. The two on the left are my heavy book, which I use for flower pressings, and then my super pop-up book. A super pop-up book? When you open it, it pops out with the force of a raging river! When an enemy has me cornered, I can just open it up facing a nearby wall and pop! Instant getaway! The only downside is that it's a real pain to try to get closed again, so I haven't used it in years. What about the book right in front? That's actually Lair Cake. Whoa! Really? Seared into its batter are precious bits of knowledge. Eating it is just as good for your brain as it is for your stomach. Wow! I had no idea that was possible! He's taking this so seriously, I almost feel bad. All of your books are so interesting, Mogilu! 
That's really cool. There's no end to your curiosity, is there? What do you say? Want to take a closer look? Boy, would I. If you really do, then say, Magilu, I want to get to know you better. Magilu, I want to get to know you better. All right, I accept. I'll reveal to you my most private secrets. Shut wow, up, Magilu. So that's what's on the other side of these books. I wouldn't have ever guessed that. What the? What are you doing with Mafiset? He said he wanted to see, so I'm showing him. You have no right to stand in the way of his desires. It's my job to protect him as his vessel, especially from someone so wicked as yourself. Also, what you're doing runs contrary to public decency. Witches aren't supposed to be decent. These bindings with the locks on them. This style used to be really popular during the Meliodas dynasty. Now that I know you're such a bad influence for him, I'll be keeping a closer eye on you. If you can't learn to take it easy, nobody's ever gonna want to marry you, you know. Like you're a shining example of marriage material yourself. Hey, Mogilu, could you turn them over one more time? I want to see how the books attach to your belt. Yeah, sure. <sighs> Hey, Mogilu, I was wondering about that book you have on your waist. The one you called your heavy book, for flower pressings. Your curiosity truly knows no bounds, does it, kiddo? Okay, nobody else knows this, but since you're so interested, I'd hate to leave you hanging. My heavy book, the one I use for flower pressings, is none other than... a collection of Bienfu's poetry. Bienfu likes to write poems? Yep. You'd never guess it, but he's actually just about the best Moloch poet around. Some people even call him the Great Norman Poet. Here, I'll read you my favorite one. If there is something unimportant happening to the East, I'm made to go there and back. If there is something unimportant happening to the West, I'm made to go there and back. I can never rest nor be at peace. Every day my life is a living hell. That's heavy stuff isn't it that's what makes it so good for pressing flowers it's so wonderfully oppressively heavy moggy lou your face has gone all sinister looking Take a look at Scout ship.
How about it, Lafayette? said. Picking up on anything? Yeah, in the direction of the temple. The feeling's getting stronger now. And there we are, folks. We have finally made it to, to straight to this beautiful temple. However, that's going to be it for today's episode, folks. Hope you all enjoying the series. I am as well. Well, let's find out what happens in this temple next time. And with that, folks, I'll see you around two dear blue.